I was scared of my bully. This is how I made him scared of me. Here's what happened. Subscribe to Am I the Jerk on YouTube and hit the bell for notifications. Hey guys, just wanted to share the story of how I dealt with bullying around 16 years ago. Little bit of backstory. I was a bit on the heavy side back then. And by a bit, I mean I was the biggest guy in size in school. So I got bullied a lot, mostly verbally. The few times it got physical, I didn't retaliate. So almost everyone knew how much of a softie I was, which ended up making me a prime target for the whole school. Also, the school was an all-exclusive boys' school. On to the story. I was called a lot of names back then. Chubby, Fatty, Big Lori, anything big in size gets associated with my name. There's this one guy who I've known since the first grade, let's call him Jerkface. And he's been relentlessly bullying me since the first time he laid eyes on me. I'm kind of a nerd. Just love computers and anything related to technology, which Jerkface didn't like. Mostly because his IQ was in the double digits and he had trouble figuring things out. So at the start of 8th grade, we could take an extra class that taught us current technology and stuff. Jerkface stayed at the back of the class and got in a lot of trouble with the teacher because he was disruptive. The technology department is located on the first floor of the school. This will be important later. I had already complained a lot to the school administration about the bullying and even had my parents involved during the fourth grade. He only got a slap on the wrist because his father was a friend of the school vice principal. Vice principal had numerous reports about Jerkface but had never taken any action. Oh, and the time my parents got involved, he said, Boys will be boys. They are just having fun. They'll grow up and look back to those moments and laugh. Who knows? Your kid might even lose weight just to impress them. My parents were helpless in this situation. So at the start of 8th grade, the bullying started. And this time it was mostly physical, punching me on the arm, slapping me in the back of the head, and my father had always taught me to turn the other cheek and always to respect others, even if they do something wrong to you. Exactly one month after the start of the school year, I went home with a black eye and fingernail scratches on my face. My father couldn't bear it anymore. That was the day that my father gave me the best advice he has ever given me. Son, you have the size and strength to overcome many things. Next time anyone even thinks of bullying you physically, mess him up bad. You'll never have trouble with anyone if you stand up and fight back against them. I had been bottling up everything up until that day. My father's words unleashed that rage beautifully. I went back to school the next day and I was fuming. Eight years of pent up rage ready to demolish Jerkface. My first class for that day was technology class. The teacher still hadn't come to class so we were all just waiting outside. Jerkface saw me and started going on and on about my size. I didn't say anything. The moment he punched me on the arm was the breaking point. I simply grabbed onto his shoulders and said the words I was waiting to say all day long. This is for all the years of you punching me and calling me names. I threw him over the railing, from the first floor. He landed on the ground with a sickening thud. What followed was the most girlish scream I have ever heard. The rest of the class had to pick their jaws up off the floor. Vice Principal came running to his aid, looked up, and saw me smiling with the biggest grin I had ever had during the eight years I spent in that hell. Parents were called and chaos followed. Jerkface's father tried to punch me in the office in front of everyone. Principal, vice principal, forehead teachers of the school, and the president of the school board who just happened to be on a visit to the school. My father got in front of him, laid a nice uppercut which dislocated his jaw. Police were called and he was arrested for trying to take a swing at me. Vice principal was fired because he never took any action against Jerkface's bullying, even though he knew the whole story. Jerkface had a broken shoulder and a broken kneecap, which stopped him from playing soccer, which he loved. After the whole fiasco was sorted out, my father gave me some new advice. Just punch their lights out. Don't throw them from balconies. I never had any more troubles with bullies. They were all scared of me. My next goal was to protect the other kids who were getting bullied. If I saw anyone bullying anybody, I would stand next to the kid and ask what's the problem. They would always apologize and leave. I could proudly say that I solved the bullying problem in our school barehanded. I'm just glad I didn't have to deal with that jerk anymore. Okay, for this one, I feel like I might have to play devil's advocate a little bit here. I feel like we might have gone a little too far in our retaliation. Dad seems to acknowledge this as well in this case. Absolutely stand up to your bullies. As Dad said, you're a big guy, you have the strength. 
so don't be afraid to if you have to. But I feel like we could have got the point across without quite such a serious injury. I feel like the biggest problem with this story though was the vice principal. Yes, boys will be boys, but you're the adult in charge and you're the one that's supposed to keep order among the boys. Whether you're friends with his dad or not, you can't just let the problem persist. It needs to be addressed, one way or another. While I'm not thrilled with how our original poster handled the situation, I can't argue with the results. One of my dad's friends thought it would be a great idea to try and play a prank on my parents' wedding day. My grandpa took care of that. My grandpa was a very quiet guy. He loved his family more than anything, and he was very observant. The wedding reception was in full swing. Everyone's drinking and dancing and having a great time. One of my dad's friends drunkenly decides to play a prank. He gets two more of my dad's buddies to help. Grandpa notices them sneaking out and watches. Now, my mom has a pretty awesome car. It was a blue Camaro with a Landau top and was either a 69, 70, or 71. Mom doesn't remember. This friend of dad's also had a Camaro of the same year. Anyway, the trio go out to mom's car, pop the hood, and take apart. I think it was spark plugs, but whatever they took, it meant the car wouldn't start, leaving my parents kind of stranded. Grandpa saw this, waited till the drunk guys went back in, then took the same part from drunk guy's car and put it in mom's. He then took drunk guy's tools and flashlight and hid them in the coat closet. Soon it's really dark, so the newlyweds leave for their hotel room. Room. Drunk guy and his friends are even drunker and discover their car won't start. They pop the hood and see the missing part and start looking for the tools and flashlight. Grandpa walks over and says, Your tools and flashlight are in the coat closet. I hope your car is comfy because the building won't be unlocked till morning. Of course, Grandpa tells Grandma. They laugh and Grandma tells Mom and Dad. My Grandpa was the best. I don't think he was being a jerk, right? Definitely not being a jerk here, I think. Grandpa might have been doing them a favor considering they were so drunk, actually. Maybe they shouldn't have been driving anyway. But this really feels like one of those you reap what you sow situations. Grandpa literally couldn't have dealt out a more equal version of justice. Let the guys sleep in the car for the night. They'll be fine. There's nothing I hate more than physically abled people using disabled parking. I've worked as a police officer for almost 10 years, and one of my pet peeves is lazy people who park in handicapped spots when there's nothing wrong with them. I've done my share of chewing out kids who pulled into those spots and telling them to quit being lazy and park somewhere else. One day last year around November, I noticed a lifted overcompensation truck parked in the spot. I get out of my patrol vehicle and approach the front of the store to see a dumb kid trying to flirt with one of the cashiers on break while leaning up against his truck. I ask him if it's his vehicle and he says it is. I then told him to quit flirting and move his overcompensation device or get a ticket. He scowls at me and leaves while the cashier cracks up. I took the wind out of his sails and he leaves in a huff. Haven't seen him since. But I'm not the jerk, right? Absolutely not. Kid needs to be put in his place. Honestly, I feel like you would have been doing the world a favor by actually writing him the ticket. Maybe getting off with a warning will teach him a lesson? I don't know, but I'm sure a ticket would have. Unfortunately, I had to tell a client they were too fat for a massage. I, 25-year-old male, work as a masseur for a somewhat small spa and have been doing so for three years. This week, I had to do something I've never done before, and that is turn someone away. What happened was we had a group booking for four people. As per usual, I grabbed the questionnaire and waiver for the client I was going to take. When I saw her, I became concerned as she was clearly over 400 pounds. Aside from the weight capacity, I wasn't sure if she would have been able to fit on the table, but I put that concern aside. For the sake of safety, I decided to weigh her with the result being she was 465 pounds. With the table's capacity being 495 pounds, I decided not to risk it. In the most polite way I could, I told her that for her safety, I can't service her. As an alternative, I offered our other services where her weight wouldn't be an issue. Unfortunately, she was too upset and embarrassed, and as a result, her and her group decided they would cancel their appointments. Because of this, three of my colleagues absolutely hate my guts now. They all believe that I should have been much more accommodating of her. So, was I the jerk? So this is one of those where bare bones from the outside looking in, it might appear like our poster's being a jerk. And he probably felt like a jerk at the time. But it doesn't seem like this decision was made out of his personal choice. He made a decision that was based on the customer's safety. And at the end of the day, I can't really argue with that. While I do feel bad for the lady that she wasn't able to enjoy the day out with her friends, I don't think it's on our poster. I don't know, maybe there were some other options that he could have had. But from what I'm hearing here, it sounds like he did what he could. 
I had to lay down the law with my parents and say they made their own bed so they can lay in it. I, 29-year-old female, was pretty much disowned by my entire family when I came out at 18. My parents gave me five minutes to grab my things before shutting me outside. I remember telling them that there was no way I could live on my own, that I was their kid and they should want to love and support me. My father told me that I made this bed myself by choosing my lifestyle so I should grow up and learn to lay in it. I turned out pretty okay all things considered. I was able to go to college on a few scholarships and not too many loans. I met my wife during our freshman year and I've been with her ever since. We have a two-year-old daughter who's the most precious little person in the world. We bought a house and we both have decent paying jobs. I consider myself to be incredibly lucky and I can't imagine my life without my wife and our daughter. I don't keep in touch much with my biological family, so I don't know how my parents got my contact info, but they did. My mom sent me a message detailing the financial issues they were going through. They had to sell the house I grew up in and they moved to some apartments. At the end of the message, my mom asked if I'd be willing to help them out for a little while by letting them stay with me. I didn't respond to the message. I just planned on pretending like I never saw it. But then I got a call the other day and as soon as I answered it, I realized my dad was on the other line. He told me the same thing my mom did and that they needed help. I said, that really sucks. I hope you figure it out. He then flat out asked if I seriously was not going to provide them with any assistance. I asked why he wanted my help and he told me that I should want to support my parents the way they supported me growing up. I replied saying that maybe if their support of me hadn't ended the moment I told them I was a lesbian, I'd be willing to help them. But unfortunately, they made their bed themselves so they can lay in it too. I hung up on him and he later left a voicemail calling me selfish and cruel for using their financial struggles to prove a point. Maybe it is cruel. I don't know. Am I being a jerk? I'm gonna have to say no, I don't feel like you're being a jerk at all. To play devil's advocate for a second, your parents probably still see those first 18 years as support, but they don't seem to understand that the straw that broke the camel's back is still there. And it seems there was no apology made or any attempt to reconcile. Literally just asking for money because they felt you owed them for the first 18 years of your life. Which doesn't feel right, no matter how you look at it. It sounds like these parents just don't have the right attitude about their kid. A flight attendant trying to apologize for spilling orange juice all over me, but I just wasn't in the mood. I was on a flight from London to Amsterdam this weekend. On the flight I was on, I was sitting in the aisle seat while someone else was in the window. During the in-flight service, the flight attendant was serving the window seat passenger a glass of orange juice when she somehow lost her grip and spilled it on me. There was no turbulence or rough air, she just simply seemed to miss her grip. Anyway, it got all over my white shirt and she tried to profusely apologize, and I interrupted her and said, just stop. That's all I said. I hadn't yelled at her or anything like that. I had an important event to attend not long after the flight. This was a day trip and I normally don't pack extras for day trips, but this time I did bring an extra shirt just in case. I went to the bathroom to change while she cleaned off the seat. Shortly before landing, the window passenger leaned over and told me that mistakes happen and I didn't have to be so dismissive. I don't think I came off as rude, but I don't know. Was I the jerk in that situation? I didn't say anything mean or yell. Even though you didn't raise your voice, your tone seems like it was kind of being jerky. At the same time, I understand how maybe you were stressed out about your upcoming meeting and this was just a bump in the road that you didn't want to have to deal with and unfortunately it happened. As a result, you were a little peeved off and didn't really want to hear her apology in that moment. But I think I have to side with your fellow passenger here that mistakes happen. It wasn't done intentionally and it sounds like she genuinely tried to apologize. While I understand maybe being upset, you have to just accept the apology for what it is. Things happen. This time, yes, you were being a little bit of a jerk. Not a huge one, though. Am I the jerk for not wanting to split my daughter's college fund with my two stepkids? I'm a 42-year-old female and my daughter is 17. When she was 7, we lost her father to an avoidable accident. Due to that and the subsequent settlement, my daughter was able to have a trust fund of sorts that provided for college, grad school if she wanted, and even some left over for whatever life might bring. It's money that, managed wisely, would enable her to have a head start in life. She knows about this, and has never taken it for granted given where the money came from. After all, we'd both rather have her father around than the money. That said, life moves on and I remarried six years after my former husband's passing to a lovely man who has two children of his own, 17-year-old female and 13-year-old male. 
All of the children live with us primarily, with his children seeing their mother on vacations as she lives across the country. This year, both our girls are graduating and should be headed to college. My daughter was admitted ED to her dream school last year and is ecstatic about it. Her father is an alumnus and she had this old sweatshirt of his that she kept to remind her of him. She cried so much when she got in. And both her stepfather and I were proud of her because she worked hard to get it. My stepdaughter will also be attending a wonderful school that is one of the top ranked schools for her interests. The problem now arises with the money to pay for my stepdaughter's school. Because her parents can't afford to pay the tuition in its entirety, my stepdaughter will have to take some loans. When all's said and done, she'll graduate with about 40000 in loans, which I think is still quite modest for the school she's attending and her earning prospects post-graduation. But my daughter will graduate debt-free, and for my husband, this is suddenly a problem. He wants us to split up my daughter's fund between all three kids, because then they could all probably have college fully paid for. My daughter won't have much left over, and will definitely need to borrow for grad school, which she has expressed interest in attending. But according to my husband, that's okay because everyone will start off on equal footing post-college. I think this is unfair to my daughter because, one, her father had to die for this money, and two, this is like her inheritance from him. My husband thinks that they're all siblings and she should be happy to share the money with them if it means giving her siblings a head start in life. I absolutely do not want to put her in the position of being guilted into saying yes if she doesn't want to. I've expressed all this to my husband and he thinks that I'm being selfish, that I'm teaching my daughter to be selfish, and I obviously don't consider my stepkids the same as my daughter. Am I the jerk for wanting to protect my daughter's trust for her as it was intended? Okay, so first things first, no, I don't think you're being a jerk. I completely think you're in the right. As you said, her father had to die for this money to come into existence for you guys. To ask for that money to be spread around to other people is not really fair. From your husband's point of view, I do understand the logistics of it. You have access to a large amount of money that could make all your kids' lives a lot easier. But let's say, God forbid, they pay for the other two kids to go to school, and they flunk out, and all that money goes to waste. How are mom and daughter going to feel about this? Not very good. At the end of the day, these other kids don't have the same respect for this money that mom and daughter do. There's a lot of weight attached to this money, and I don't think the other kids are going to carry it properly. Whereas if they're $40,000 in debt out of their own pocket, they might respect it a little more. This would definitely be a decision that comes down to the daughter, but I agree that it shouldn't be forced upon her or have her put in a position where she feels she has to say yes. This is one you just leave alone. If she decides to make that gesture, then that's up to her. It's no one else's money but hers. I called the police when the people I was babysitting for wouldn't answer their phone. So I'm 14 and I babysit for a few people in my neighborhood. On Friday, I was babysitting for a couple that moved into the city from the south. They're only a block from my house, so my parents were okay with me staying there until 10. They said they would be home by 9. They did not get home at 9. At quarter to 10, I started texting them to see if they were on their way. Then I called my parents. My mom came over because I was getting worried. It had snowed pretty bad on Friday and they weren't answering. At 11.30, we phoned the police. I was freaking out. The police got their names and address and I guess they found their license plates or something like that. They found them in about 25 minutes. They were at their friend's house. They called me and they were mad that I had called the police. I promise I wouldn't have called the police if they had answered my texts or calls. And my mom was concerned as well. I didn't call to get them in trouble. I was worried. But they told my mom that I'm not mature enough to be babysitting if that's how I'm going to behave. I feel bad that the police made them come home from their friend's house. But I think they should have answered their phone. What if something was wrong with their kids? I don't know. Am I the jerk here? No, I don't think you're a jerk. It sounds like you're a perfectly responsible 14-year-old which are few and far between, by the way. Probably more responsible than the parents that weren't paying attention to the time and weren't paying attention to their phones. What are you, the babysitter, going to think when it's after two hours past when they should have been home and they're not answering their phones? Do they expect you to just spend the night there and maybe give them another call in the morning and hope for the best? Of course, you're going to reach a certain point where you're starting to get concerned and panic. And naturally, when you feel something's wrong or that they might be in trouble, you're going to call the police. At least the police were able to find them quickly and there wasn't anything wrong with them. But yeah, parents are kind of jerks here for pointing the finger at a 14-year-old who was just trying to make sure everyone was okay. 
It really is sad how sometimes full-grown adults can have less class than a 14-year-old. Either way, good for you, you did the right thing, don't stress about it at all. Sounds like you have plenty of other clients, so just focus on them. When you subscribe, make sure to hit the bell to turn on notifications. Put the playlist on in the background to finish listening to all the stories linked at the top of the description. And if you like Am I the Jerk, give Am I the Genius a shot, linked in the description as well. Either way, thanks a lot for watching, and we'll see you guys next time.